It's emerged this week that two Manx hockey clubs have been deducted points after fielding players who were not eligible to play in respective matches. Uh, joining us in the studio alongside hockey correspondent Sam Spooner this evening is John Sheath, the chairman of the Manx Hockey Association, as we discuss uh, the rules surrounding player eligibility. Uh, the two clubs who have been hit this week are men's Division One side Harlequins A and perhaps more interestingly hands down the most dominant women's side in Manx hockey history in the form of of Vikings A. Uh, they hadn't lost a game in 12 years, but the standings now read two defeats this season after earlier results against Bacchus A and Castletown A were overturned. We are not going to discuss individual cases uh, this evening as appeals are ongoing. I don't feel it would be right uh, to delve any deeper at this juncture, but what we shall do is hopefully provide a bit more clarity uh, surrounding the rules uh, and what constitutes a rule breach uh, when it comes to player registration. Uh, John Sheath, good evening to you. Hi, Chris. Uh, and if you could begin, please, by just outlining what the current situation is. Sure, with pleasure. I mean, with hockey, you have a, a league. We have the Manx League that Manx Hockey Association run. In England, there are England Hockey, and they run several leagues, north, south, all over the place, Midlands, and so on. And it's a little bit like in football. You couldn't be playing for Barcelona and Real Madrid or Barcelona and Peel. So you have to play for one team. And the principle is the same. The rules, the bylaws state, you can only be registered in one league. So if you're registered here, you cannot be registered somewhere else in, say, England. So if a player is registered in the Isle of Man, playing for any, any Manx team, goes to university, typical example, and then plays for a university team, they will register there as well. Immediately... They're ineligible in both places. They have to deregister from here and transfer to the new league. And that's what hasn't been happening in every case. It has in some, but not in every case. And where we've had a few problems lately is where players have been playing in England, maybe not even playing in England, but registered. That's the key. They were registered in another league. So when they come back here and play a game or two, it turns out, they're ineligible because they're still registered here to play, obviously, but they're still registered over there. Uh, now, that seems fairly straightforward, but let's go to our hockey correspondent, Sam Spooner, because it seems, given the number of cases that we've had in recent times, that uh, many people in Manx hockey aren't particular, uh, particularly familiar with the rules. Yeah, I mean, it's you've got all sorts of captains. You've got experienced captains, massively experienced captains, in fact, and new captains that have taken on the mantle in their various clubs to, to volunteer their services that obviously haven't been quite clear on the rules or haven't understood the rules. And I was talking to John earlier about perhaps what can the MHA do to help this situation because it doesn't, it doesn't look very good for the MHA or Manx hockey community in general when these failures are basically at least one a season, um, every season. So is there an education piece that can possibly be done, maybe some workshops that could be run on the MHA bylaws for captains or new captains, etc. cetera? Um, but is there anything else that you feel could be done by the clubs themselves, by the MHA, by the captains, to ensure this doesn't happen going forward? Sure. I mean, it, I mean, it, it, Chris is right. It, it, fundamentally, it's a very simple issue. If you're registered here, you can't be registered elsewhere and vice versa. How can we help this simple message get through well, I think responsibility, the clubs have responsibility and the captains and the players themselves. You know, we're all grown-ups playing these games. But I think you're right. Some kind of workshop to help explain various rules perhaps might, might be a good thing to do. I'm very open to that. We have a club reps meeting at the end of March. Clubs are very welcome to bring their issues along to that. Um, but it, it's got to start with the club. You know, the, the rules of hockey govern how you hit the ball and how you don't hit people. And the bylaws cover the rest of it. And the bylaws state this very, very clearly. So if clubs are familiar with the bylaws that explain how you can field a player, surely it's not too far to ask them to be familiar with how you can't field a player. But the, the more we can do to help, what I'm determined is the Manx Hockey Association will have clarity and transparency forevermore. That is my mission, is to give it that transparency so that everybody knows what's going on. We're going to apply the rules. If they're wrong, we need to change them. That's fine. Let all the clubs agree the changes. We'll implement them. 
But until that point, the rules as they are are what we will apply. And, and everyone knows then where you are. Yeah, I think from my point of view, I don't think there's been any issues with the way the governance surrounding the decisions and the votes has been made as anything but what's in the bylaws. But there are some in the Manx hockey community that would like to see change within the way the MHA governs itself, governs the hockey. Um, there is a perception that the way clubs have a say in how decisions are made has led to a bit of a toxic atmosphere and sometimes a bit of a witch hunt on who said what to who. Um, there's a lot of gossip and a lot of hearsay arise from these sorts of situations as well and it's very difficult to it's very difficult to dispel that without that transparency and clarity that we possibly haven't had in the past few seasons well let me let me just tackle one straight on transparency is it's absolutely fundamental and we're on an island in a place where we all know each other we all are conflicted in all sorts of ways in business you can be conflicted in a board because you're a director of something else. You could know somebody else, you could know information. And you have to recuse yourself if you are conflicted. And I've applied that same reasoning and rationale to the MHA. So when we've been discussing these issues lately, um, the, take the Vikings one, Chris, that you opened with. Uh, Debbie is not contributing to this in any way. She's aware of it, she's informed, but is not voting, not adding or anything when there was a Valkaz issue with um, somebody playing too many times last November I recused myself, delegated it to Jenny as vice chairman to look after that. In the Harlequins one, Sue had no involvement in this recent Vikings one, as I say Debbie hasn't and that's for me it is simple simple because you have to avoid any accusations yeah. toxicity we do not need or want. So for me, I'm applying the same business principles to this organisation where if you have raised the complaint, if you are the complaining, the team had the complaint made against them, you cannot vote. And that's something that I think, and you've been speaking to me earlier today as well about the MHA bylaws currently going through an update process and stuff. And you said that, and one thing I should make clear to everybody listening as well, is that clubs will have the opportunity to suggest those changes to the bylaws as well which is probably something that right now is everybody's got something to say um, and the <laughs> amount of messages i've had this week everybody's got something to say yeah as i said to you before sam um once things happen there's always there's no shortage of people with opinion but one of the things that we as a body need is to remedy the shortage of people who will stand up and be counted and take roles we've got some roles that we need filling and we've had them empty for about six, eight months. We need people to help because if we don't have enough volunteers, like any sport, we can't function. And so those those issues can be addressed with the right amount of people as well. That is a very valid point. There seems to be plenty of people who are happy to shout from the sidelines. But when it comes to actually putting themselves forward to help deal uh, with Manx Hockey Matters, they're not there. They they don't wish to be involved. What I would say, though, is a lot of the, the players and the clubs involved, obviously vastly experienced. Um, we shall, again, discuss the, the Vikings one. I know there's an appeal ongoing, so we won't go into the ins and outs of it. But this is a Vikings ladies' side who have been the dominant force in Manx hockey for more than a decade. And they haven't been dominant by breaking the rules. They've been dominant because they've been by far and away the best Absolutely. hockey side and they remain on the Isle so. of Man. As the ladies team, they are the best. So for them to fall foul of a rule breach such as this, it does lead to questions over how clear the policy and the rules and regulations that the MHA are providing for clubs because they wouldn't have done this unless they thought that they were abiding by the rules. I th you're right, Chris, but I think, and we can't talk specifics, I have not actually received an appeal yet. However, I believe I'm going to get one you know, I say I, we, the body, we, the board will get one. But I would say this, that there's a very big distinction between playing or not playing and being registered or not registered. And if a player is registered for a club in a league off island and has never played for them, say, and they play here, they're ineligible. So I think, I think for me, the key message is if you have a player that is registered on the Isle of Man with your club, 
you need to make sure that they are not dual registered in any way, shape, or form. And I think that's the key message Spot that's on. come out of the past past week, is that there are specifics in the MHA bylaws that you need to look into. But first and foremost, if you have any doubt in your mind that a player could be registered in the UK and on the Isle of Man, you need to go and make sure that that is not the case. Absolutely right. How That's aware how aware are players when they go across to university? Uh, it used to be a case, I know, when I was at university that you could play on a Wednesday but you couldn't play on a Saturday. Is that still the case? I mean, how aware are players when they go across? They're at uni, they're usually uh, out on the lash, I think, most of the time. <laughs> um, do, do they know that they're being registered? That's, I'm for, glad for you mentioned club? that, Chris. That's a really good point. Um, because if a, if a player is registered for a books team in a books league and is playing on a Wednesday, that's fine. And we are allowed to ignore that. And I've confirmed this with England Hockey. I chatted for an hour with them on Monday, the North Region representative, to make sure that what I was saying was correct. And absolutely, if they're playing in a books league on the Wednesday, it's not a problem. You can stay registered here and you can be registered there for the books league only. And that's fine. The moment that team or a new uni team, or you join another club, is in a, a league that plays on a Saturday, outside the books competition specifically, that's where there's a problem. And I think that's the misunderstanding, that people think, well, I'm, only, I'm at uni, I'm playing books, so it's okay. I but think another, just to add to that as well, that I have known people to be registered to play books leagues, but the university has also registered every player and every member player and every yeah. player in every squad that they run, whether regardless or not whether they're registered to play in the books league or not, to their just other in case leagues on Saturdays, yeah. just in case. So yeah. there's, we'll go back to that key message that you just have to be very, very careful. And if you have a player at uni that comes back to the Isle of Man to play, yeah. you need to make sure they are not dual registered. Yeah.